Hello! Looks like the microphone's working. (laughs) Hi guys, welcome back to my podcast. I'm Dawn and I'm a doctor. Today we are discussing hearing the words, the very hard words, I don't love you anymore. Now, I've gone through two big breakups. I'm currently in a relationship and Tom was, my boyfriend, pretty freaked out when he saw me (laughs) googling how to get over a breakup and other breakup related things. He came in, saw it on my massive computer screen and I was like, don't worry, I'm actually just writing a podcast episode, I promise, I promise, and um, showed him that. So hopefully that settled his uh, anxiety about that. But... (laughs) That was a bit of a concerning moment, okay? If you're new here, hi. We discuss all things positive or sometimes not positive, such as this, but we put a positive spin on it, positive twist. We want to make the world a more positive place. That is why it's called backseat positivity. Positivity often takes a backseat in our lives, but we need to bring it into the into the driver's seat, really, don't we? And if you're old here, do you need a wheelchair? Are you okay? No, I'm joking. Um, hi, welcome back. <laughs> Honestly, guys, I appreciated and still appreciate, not just past tense, I appreciate your comments so, so much. I'm actually going to reply to them straight after this. I need to, like, get on and do it because I fuck about and just don't get on with things that I need to do. But honestly, you do not understand how much I appreciated those comments, like, on my last podcast episode. Like, love, love is in the air for me. Um, In fact, I'm going to give you a shout out right now because I've got the episode up. I might get this wrong, sorry. Luke Gahi, thanks. Someone's liked it, I don't know who that was. Maybe I'll like it too. Uh, and Wel- Welton Rand Wanderer. I'm going to be commenting, I'm going to be directly replying to you guys, so thanks so much. Thanks. Okay, today's a very exciting episode. I'm actually like weirdly looking forward to sharing my very tragic story of my two big breakups and we're going to go through them and if you are suffering from just having been broken up with or having broken up with somebody this is the episode for you in fact it's definitely the episode for you because not only did I shower for this and do my hair and put in new earrings it's a special day I also highlighted my my sheet I'm not going to show you the back because that's the uh that's the end of the episode so you know you want to hear it from me don't you but we've got a lot to talk about and it's in technicolor and that is my favorite kind of existence technicolor right so it ah oh, i just want to have a quick little side note is it just me or when you are disgustingly stinky does it feel the best ever to have a shower and just cleanse all of that off of you honestly i feel like a new fucking person every time I do it I'm like sometimes I want to let myself get really stinky just so I can get in the shower and be like I am now a goddess and there goes the ambulance again great it's because I live right by a hospital so well I live in the city centre so okay number two on the agenda I'd like to point out is my number two habit literally I have a poo habit midway through podcasts I need to go for a poo it's a problem um I don't know if it's because I'm like sitting down or because I'm like jumping about and getting excited or I don't know because I've just had a coffee it could be all three it could be just one of those who the fuck knows not me but I may have to zip off (laughs) and come back there we go now we've covered all the ground rules of the session um are there any other ground rules okay no no using your mobile phones please um no loud eating because it distracts the um the animals in the show me no I'm joking of course um okay so come on I'm I don't know why I'm so excited I think because I just love getting engagement from fans and also I think this is going to be a fucking great episode I really do I am well over my breakups well over them trust me you bet you better believe it okay so and also only people who know me will know who these people are so whatever I don't really care I'm not going to say any shit about them I'm just going to explain the situation and how I got over the breakup and like how it felt for me so if you're that person listening and you're like oh my fucking god I was one of those people don't worry I'm going to be, I'm not going to shit on you. I don't think you're a bad person. Don't worry. Okay. Hearing the words I don't love you anymore, literally, and I've written these three feelings down, right? 
it feels like and, and this is when you still love the person okay so i'm gonna sneeze i'm really sorry <coughs> oh dear i'm very sorry about that one okay at least i moved away from the microphone but that did redline the uh the audio there it feels like three feelings if you still love the person and they tell you i don't love you anymore number one it feels like somebody has hit you with a bus or other large vehicle into your heart number two it feels like somebody has stabbed you and twisted it multiple times into your stomach yay and number three i don't know if this this isn't like a physical feeling but it actually feels like somebody has died like you have lost you're grieving and this is where i get into it it is a grief reaction you are actually grieving the loss of and it's like they've died okay i remember when me and one of my exes i'll tell you about the second one when one of my exes broke up with me oh my god you think i'll have got all of these bodily functions out of the way but i'm sorry my body doesn't rest for anybody okay it doesn't rest for the podcast it doesn't even rest for me unless i'm asleep i've never had to get up in the middle of the night to to poo or maybe burp no that's not true okay um what was i talking about oh yeah in one of my breakups the very first one in fact let's let's get into story time shall we my first boyfriend i was 14 we've all been there childhood sweetheart i think you call them and i we met right we didn't go to school together we met through my i was in the same year as his sister at school and we weren't in the same classes but we were at the same school and then i can't remember how it happened but um his sister got with my stepbrother and then i don't know if this is incest or not but then it's not but then i got with his her her brother okay it's not incest promise it i don't know it's a bit weird though but anyway i i don't know what it was it was like we looked i like met him and i was just like you're the fucking one i it was a very intense relationship i fucking loved this guy okay loved him so much that i struggled to be apart from him and i don't know if it's just because i was young probably um but i was so obsessed with him uh, him the same for me like it wasn't i mean i'm you know speaking for him but i think it was this it was mutual we wanted to spend every fucking second with each other and it it was really great but we argued a lot i don't know why uh probably because he was 16 and i was yeah 15 i think i like grew up like gained a birthday <laughs> what uh in the time that we were together he was 16 i was 15 and when you're like young you don't really control your emotions very well and i'm much better at it now but i really think i was a fucking nightmare when i was younger and i used to get like really jealous about um his ex like literally i don't even know why and i was used to be like she's more pretty than me and i was i think i was a bit of a nightmare of a girlfriend but he was you know he had his issues too okay so it was a mutual issue (laughs) anyway we had nine months of great time relationship time um well probably not nine months that it was nine months in total the total relationship time but we it started to get like a bit sour near the end and as in you know he we just argued a lot and it was a problem because it makes you unhappy and then you get to the point where you're like oh oh telling relationship stories is fun isn't it and that's not even sarcasm like i wish it was but it's not like i'm actually quite enjoying it reminiscing on days when i had a boyfriend and first class up in the sky okay so i remember he where was it um our breakup was fucking tragic okay it really was it was i was angry i was upset i was hurt i was more angry i was it was just a fucking disaster i did not want to break up with him even though it's the best thing for us like for sure but 
I'm sorry, I sprayed my nose with this like steroid spray right before, not right before, maybe like an hour ago, but it's it's coming back to haunt me, okay? <laughs> oh, I will try and cut out that horrendous noise. I really don't like that noise either, so I'm very sorry. I'm so sorry. Okay, so yeah, I had all of those feelings, felt like a bust to the heart, felt like a knife to the stomach, and it felt like he had died. I saw this fucking boy every day all the time I wanted to spend every waking second with him and then he turns around <clears throat> and says I don't love you anymore and I remember one thing that really stuck in my mind and if you're listening boy you better fucking believe that I remember this okay I remember he said and this is why I have such there's some songs in my head that really stick with that like era of breakup because I remember that song coming out when he broke up with me and um it was Green Light by Roll Deep (laughs) which like yeah anyway I remember that song it was like it just reminds me of that breakup era so good times um and I don't mind listening to it now so if that's any consolation to you guys then you're welcome because we'll get to it but time heals okay it's now over how many years ago was it i'm 28 now 14 years ago fucking hell half of my life ago is when we went when we were together Ooh, okay anyway the thing i remember that he said to me which was really fucking heartbreaking was um i was walking he like was meeting me and i was walking with somebody and i think it was quite cold so i was wearing like a coat and he said when you walked down that path you walked like a man and that's when i realized i didn't love you anymore and i was like you are a fucking dickhead okay that really that triggered me triggered me all right i know i walk a bit abnormally maybe i don't know but i'm not a catwalk model okay i get it but that one hurt and that's what i remember anyway there was some screaming a lot of anger (laughs) i won't go into the severe details because we don't need to hear that anyway it was a long drawn out process of sadness okay and there is a reason why it hurts also before i forget i'd like to get to the point that i remember i think that's when i like left the area um no actually i got my gcse's and then i left so um this is a really tragic side note but he used i used to have this like after school science class i had to do because i did triple science yeah i'm smart and we had tuesday whatever time it was until like four o'clock he every week he used to meet me after that session and when we broke up oh my god i used to i used to like be almost tragically anticipating and excited that he would maybe be there and every time he was not obviously but every time it broke my heart and it was like I would like look around the corner and be like (gasps) oh and it would like feel like it would be that bust to the chest again just mm, it was painful okay now there is a reason why hearing those words or having a breakup where somebody says I don't love you anymore and you still love them there's a reason why it hurts okay and that is because it releases and this is actually like a a study okay like people they put people into MRI scanners which is like a brain scanner and they measured pain neurotransmitters versus uh, breakup and it released the same it lit up the same areas of the brain okay and they were like burning people's forearms which i don't know if that's ethical (laughs) like how do you burn somebody's forearm without scarring them i don't know i don't know it sounds it sounds troubling but there we go i didn't do the i didn't do the experiment so we're all good and there is actually okay this is a fucking doctor segment here i think i might need to go and blow my nose i just burped i'm sorry (sighs) one sec oh I'm so sorry about this like I just have bodily functions and they like to get involved in the podcast okay so there is a actual disease an actual disease called and it's like Japanese for squid 
basket or something squid something uh because of the shape it makes your heart right go it's called takotsubu go look it up it's spelled t-a-k-o-t-s-u-b-u maybe i don't know i've just written that down but i'm quite good at spelling so i think that's how you spell it it might have another o in there (laughs) instead of a u anyway i'm sure you'll find it it's called broken heart syndrome basically you see it in mainly older people I've never seen a young person with it but basically what happens is they go into like their heart stops working it's a temporary thing don't fucking worry and if you're my age it's almost unheard of but I've seen it I have and it's actually called stress cardiomyopathy but blah 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 uh you can the common colloquial term for it would be broken heart syndrome so There is an actual thing that happens. We don't really know, but it often correlates with uh, extreme stress events in people's lives. The death of a partner, the death of a child, usually those two, to be honest. (laughs) Um, And it's like they go into temporary heart failure. We don't, I, I mean, I specifically don't know why I haven't looked it up, but it's, I don't think it's like fully known the, the pathophysiology of it, like the mechanism, but it happens and then usually it reverses. And how crazy is that? Like, I think that is actually insane that you can go through a breakup and your heart literally breaks in inverted commas, by the way, if you're just listening on the podcast, because it doesn't actually break and it's just temporary, but it literally start it like breaks and then it resolves and it's like okay I feel a lot better now and people come into hospital for it and I honestly my mind is completely blown right now like I think that's insane so if you are watching this and you have just gone through a breakup one don't worry you're probably not suffering with heart failure Two, I just want you to literally appreciate that comment for a second there, that people can actually get a broken heart, in inverted commas because it's not an actual broken heart, a broken heart from going through a breakup. Now, this is why, because everyone's going to be like, when you're going through a breakup, like, why am I so miserable? Why am I so sad? Why is everybody else happy and I'm not? Everyone's in a relationship and I'm not and I'm not lovable and it's really sad and I want to cry all the time like or words of those effect words of that effect (laughs) and yes you may think that but literally there is a physiological and inside body response and I think that is crazy and is underrated okay when you go through a breakup especially a significant one and you may even have a complicated breakup where there was some kind of abuse involved even more difficult but sometimes there's, I don't know if there's a sort of bittersweet um, ending to that, Um, but it may be even more difficult, and I just want you to appreciate the the fact that you are, you may be struggling, but you are not alone, and at least you haven't got heart failure, but no, sorry, that was, that was a bad joke, Um, but as in, I want you to appreciate the fact that it is, it, it, it takes a big toll on the body, like, it's not to be understated and now my nose is running I'm okay give me a few minutes I'm gonna go sort my body out (laughs) why do you do this to me why do you want to snot pee poo sneeze cough yawn (sighs) brb do you want an update or not probably not basically I had a pee I tried to blow my nose literally nothing happened so we've got tissue (sighs) for the event that it starts running again okay thanks for that right so that is my story number one. Oh, let me let me finish off the story because that's not the end of it then okay so i can't remember the exact timings with this but like we are broken up and this is a bad idea okay i had lots of bad ideas as a teenager this was one of them now now what happened was he made contact a few times three i believe to be precise number one in fact i made contact as well but should i tell this story no i'm gonna leave this bit out but i'll tell you the three contacts (laughs) number one we met up in a park i believe maybe it was a graveyard it could have been both 
either a park or a graveyard or park graveyard combined i don't remember anyway it was i remember where it was so i could probably find out but no one cares but we met up he wanted to meet up i believe it was him or maybe it was me i don't remember fucking sue me incorrect information i don't remember i am sorry okay but we met up and I feel like there was some kind of discussion about maybe it was me because I was like I want you back I'm so like I want to be together I'm sorry I was a fucking mess okay I'll be honest I was the mess okay number two he made contact several time several eons in the future um not that far maybe a few months but we never got back together we never had breakup sex. I have never had breakup sex in my life. If I've broken up with somebody, like, that's it. It just, that's it. It's severed, like, the end. I don't know. I'm not that kind of person. And number two, I can't remember why I was in this place. It might have been because I worked, basically, I was walking through the town that, I was walking through the town that I used to live in, but I'd, like, moved and I think I was walking back to the train station and he drove past and I remember getting a text message from him and he was obviously, he obviously liked what he saw. He was obviously missing me. I don't remember what the text message said, but it was something like, hey, how are you? Like classic slide. Mm. Batteries died. (sighs) It's just disaster after disaster happening here because I don't know if that last clip saved and for the youtube is it's going to be an issue you know i'm just gonna have to put a blank screen there again or some beautiful stock footage it's an actual fucking nightmare my camera i love it 90 percent of the time maybe 80 percent and then this happens and then i hate it i don't care if you cut off but save the last video anyway i'm sorry ranty rant okay we were talking about episode number two i believe i'd got that one out of the way anyway nothing happened with that next i go to uni Number three, I don't remember why he sent me a message, what triggered it, I mean, who knows, but I'd just gone to uni, it was like maybe a few months in, and I got a message from him like, hey, do you want to meet up? Of course. And I remember speaking to my friends about it and being like, my ex-boyfriend sent me this, like, what should I do? Like, I I did want to see him, like I did, I thought, you know, we've both grown up now, maybe it would be fine, maybe we'll have, you know, stopped arguing. I was 18, he would have been like 19 or 20, so I thought, yeah, why not? But at the time I was already seeing somebody and my next boyfriend and um, so it wasn't like serious, maybe it was like a couple of, like a month or so in, like maybe even a few weeks. Anyway, so I was already seeing somebody, so I was kind of like, maybe if I wasn't seeing him, I might have done, I don't know. But also, I remember my friend at uni who was in the same flat as me said, Dawn, you two broke up for a reason, like, it's not a good idea. And I was like, yeah, that's true. So, I can't remember how, but I blew him off, essentially. Oh, wait, no, that that was the wrong, that was the wrong sentence to use. I blew him off, like, in the American sense, like, I just totally blew him off. Um, <laughs> I said, like, I sacked him off, I said, no, thank you. Uh, I'm otherwise occupied and I wish I could see the message but I don't know and I've had a different phone since then and stuff like that so there we go that is the whole saga anyway I believe he's got kids now I have otherwise heard nothing nothing about him I don't even know I I don't know if he's like blocked me on Facebook or something because um, I can't see anything about him not that I've looked recently but maybe a long time ago and there we go that's that one that was that was the hardest breakup I've been through the second one fucking easy in comparison okay and let's go and just say not all breakups are cut from the same cloth some of them are easy that was the second one for me some of them are hard and painful and last a long time and it very much depends on how the progression of the relationship is before it ends is it cut off suddenly or is it like a slow downhill and then you're kind of expecting it and kind of already broken up and then you're like oh let's actually end this come on so 
the first breakup for me was like the uh, like crash land heart sunk I would have got fucking heart failure if I was older like it was bad and number two was like uh, yeah we're not really this is not really like going anywhere is it okay like fine but it was a longer relationship but I guess in a sense I had longer to fail yes also I was probably a bit more emotionally mature you know I was like 20 early 20s I don't remember but um I wasn't like 16 and a fucking so (laughs) let's talk about the stages of grief okay because I think that's important there are in theory seven stages to grief and they are not linear necessarily I'm going to talk about them in a linear fashion but you might skip some you might take longer in others you might and this is what if you're going through a breakup right now or have just gone through one expect this okay if you're like in you know if you're in camp one dawn you know like dawn that was 16 and very sad if you're camp two dawn it might be quicker and should I let me tell you about my second breakup because I feel like I can then compare the grief stages because they were very different so my second breakup was nearly four years long I think it was like three and a half but we got together in like almost the first few months of uni it was crazy and uh you might have heard me talking to my friend Sophie in which she calls him a potato which was (laughs) very funny but a bit mean let's be honest and anyway potato boyfriend um he just like wasn't for me I think it was more we were together with convenience and then we just never broke up and it came to a point in you know we were like living together and it came to a point in at uni where we had to start applying for jobs and that's when we had the discussion about especially as a doctor you know you um you will need to move you're not necessarily going to get the job in the location that you want so I was like look where shall I apply and he was like it doesn't fucking matter you're going to do what you want anyway and I was like yeah probs but um no I was like no actually I would take you your you know into consideration your opinion and um then we it was weird we kind of broke up in the car like the conversation started in the car and then we broke up in the car and it was kind of like this oh okay did that just happen moment but it was happening for a long time we were distancing we never saw each other because he worked nights and I was busy in the day and it was just like he didn't bother with my friends and I never met his friends and we were starting to argue and I was just like not interested I just (laughs) yeah it was just like the relationship was was done so's okay it was done. Now, awkwardly, we lived together for two months after we broke up. The man just would not move out, okay? It was awful. It was okay to start with, you know, but then I was like, please leave me. I was so done, okay? Within two months of us breaking up, like, in fact, within a couple of weeks, I was just fucking done. I was like, can you leave now, please? And yes, I know that's bitchy of me to be like, you're leaving, but we did discuss it, and he was going to be the one that was leaving. And he was okay, or somewhat okay, I don't really know how okay with it he was, but he was okay with it and I was like okay like can you just hurry up and I really had to put the fucking pressure on because some people just won't do things unless you really force them to I'm like why do you want to live with your ex-girlfriend for forever anyway it it finally happened um but in the initial stages of the breakup so we went back inside um from sitting in the car and having basically just broken up then we and I'm going to tell you how quickly I went through the status of grief because it was really fucking quick okay so I'd already gotten over this relationship but seemingly you're gonna think I'm some kind of unhinged bitch I'm not but I'm sorry it's an emotive it's an emotive issue like my emotions took over and that is how I responded so seven stages of grief number one and I am gonna have to refer to my little piece of paper here I'm sorry I don't remember them off the top of my head number one shock (gasps) that was my reaction of shock okay slash a need for answers it's called different things in different places number two denial no this this isn't happening we're not breaking up what like how this is stupid number three bargaining and that is like 
um no come on we can make this work uh i'm sorry i i leave the tea towels on the floor like i'll stop doing it we can work this out it it will be fine we can work out a system we'll spend more time together we'll we'll go to therapy right that's bargaining number four anger fuck you i never liked you anyway you're a fucking dick i hate you go die in hell you're shit in bed like something like that maybe uh depression ben and jerry's time okay sofa crying ben and jerry's friends maybe a little bit of post breakup going out maybe that's in that stage initial acceptance you start to think oh maybe okay maybe maybe there are other fish in the sea maybe i'm starting to see the light now hope yeah i'm totally ready to go out and look for new people and i'm fucking living life goodbye sucker i didn't love you anyway and i'm having a better time without you now i went through that (laughs) cycle pretty i would say almost identically to that order like i'm a textbook bitch okay and what happened was um i probably went through that in about the the probably the the first five I went through in probably about the space of two, one or two days. It was very quick. Then the next two, except initial acceptance and hope, was the rest of it. Like, I was just over it. I, I'd already broken up with him months ago in my mind. And it was just like, well, we're just living together, so here we go. Whereas, on the other hand, my first relationship was that that probably stretched out over, like, I would say. Like, it was it was a long time, maybe, maybe a bit less, it was bad, like, I was so fucking sad, I loved that guy so much, and every time I would see him, it would make me sad, and thankfully I moved away from the place, but I thought about him, and it was bad, 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 can I say bad anymore, like, it was fucking bad, okay, now, it's interesting how the length of time getting over it does differ I can't give you a length of time that it it will be I'm sorry um maybe the length of time of the relationship if you actually care about it if you don't hopefully a week (laughs) like me but then if you if you don't care about it then I'm surprised that you're listening to this episode unless it's just for fun and to hear my tragic sad breakup stories which is fine I'm not blaming you okay now I've given you a little list of things to do and things not to do in actual fact they're the opposite order so things not to do and things to do <sighs> you might not like some of these i'm sorry guys if you're reeling from a breakup don't do drugs okay that's my first one okay you can drink for a bit like go out see your friends get fucking drunk you'll feel sad after though i'm telling you it's a depressant so and you'll get anxiety it won't be good okay but you'll probably do it anyway you won't listen to me that's fine it's okay. We're allowed to slip up. But don't start doing hard drugs, all right? No one ever wants to go there. But they'll just make you more depressed. It will make you more, I don't know, off the wire, off the, uh, off the, I don't know, off the hoof. What's the word? I don't know. Just fill in the blank there. Off the wall. I think that's the word. It'll make you more off the wall. Number two, don't have them back. Break up sex never a good idea okay unless you do not give a shit about them Uh, that sounds really mean okay but if you're both just mutually like we can't be in a relationship together we argue too much we just don't work okay if you both mutually agree with that and you're both like well let's just let's just keep having sex like it's fine like we have we have good sex um if you can do that it's very niche and i would be very surprised if that's if that's a possibility good luck I believe in you. I what I'm not saying to do is to if you know you've just broken up with that person or vice versa. You know, if you're both one of you or both of you is feeling sad, if you're not in a place or they're not in a place where they can emotionally handle breakup sex and it's mutually accepted and fine, please don't go and use them for sex or vice versa. Like that's not what I'm saying. What I'm saying is you could you know I don't I don't know if you're really not that bothered and you want some sex and they want some sex and it's fine then whatever 
but don't go hurting don't go hurting no one's feelings okay and don't go hurting your feelings i don't even know what this accent is but maybe it's american i don't know okay i would say i've also said don't beg to have them back don't do what bloody 15 year old dawn did like please i love you i just i really want you back and i can't imagine my life without you and i thought we were gonna have children together and live our lives you can do that but not to them i wouldn't just don't do it like it doesn't get you anywhere you're still broken up if they don't love you anymore then that's kind of that's that's a game changer all right i don't think you you begging is gonna make that any better i'm sorry i'm blunt af but we are getting down and dirty right now um now this might fit quite well with the um denial and bargaining phase okay i'm not saying don't go through those phases it's important to go through the stages of grief if you need to um some you might be able to skip um but i'm i just don't think doing it to them is that helpful um i think getting answers in the initial shock phase is important like you need closure okay you need closure and if people just fucking ghost you i'm sorry but they are a waste of space like if you're in a relationship and then they just disappear fuck them okay this is an explicit episode i'm very sorry but i wouldn't take them back i wouldn't have breakup sex don't cling on go cling on to something else okay and not drugs but yeah cling on to something but not not of the narcotic kind okay finishing off this episode with things that you should do or that you could do like you don't have to oh by the way if you've got any comments or any like ideas or any suggestions leave them in the comments down below because i am sure someone else would like to hear them including me not that i need them right now but um i would like to read them just because i'm like have i missed anything i don't know okay (laughs) things to do i am a big advocate of doing things that make you feel fucking good okay i don't care as long as they're not like illegal or uh, damaging to other people or um damaging to yourself i.e. narcotics um i am like if something feels good that is your gut go with it and just go and fucking do it so when i broke up with my well when he broke up with me my first boyfriend i really wanted to drink cups of tea and i really wanted to sit with my mum and watch coronation street and i'm not a clingy person but i was like mum, i need to please i need to come and watch soaps with you in bed like i just need to she was like what the fuck is going on like dawn has never behaved like this in her entire life i don't know why she didn't get it like i was literally so sad that my ex-boyfriend had just broken up with me um but anyway that is what i needed to do i needed some love from somewhere else and just get that from a healthy source you know if that's your friends if that's your family if that's your dog if that's your cat if it's your fucking chinchilla i don't care get whatever feels good emotionally okay i don't think you should go seeking some kind of physical like high um like oh i'm gonna go and jump off a fucking bungee jumping bridge like okay you might want to do that but i just think that i just think when you're low when you're down when you're down and out i don't know if that's the right phrase when you're down and out doing things that gives you a high like a fucking dopamine adrenaline rush or yeah that's it um makes you want to use that activity more for um and it as in it becomes like more of an addictive thing you don't want to get into this addictive cycle this is a very vulnerable state you're in okay be nice to yourself don't hook on to addictive behaviors you want to take things that feel good in an emotional way and sometimes that might mean ice cream that might mean watching trash tv it might mean asking your friend to come over and not talk to you but just like be there okay i don't know it might mean going out with your friends i'm just i'm a big advocate of just like if something feels good and you want to do it and it makes you feel good and it makes you feel happy and you're feeling really fucking sad i get this with my anxiety a lot i don't have my anxiety is like not super bad but when it comes it comes okay oh boy so i get quite bad hangover anxiety and period anxiety if you're a female you understand or a male actually because um you get the hangover one but maybe not the period one but 
they are bad okay I know lots of people that get that and in those points of my life I'm just like I am gonna do whatever fucking feels good if I want to drink six hot chocolates you best believe I'm gonna do it if I want to eat ice cream or order four deliveries in one day you best believe I'm gonna do it if I want to lie down and watch movies all day and cuddle my dogs I'm gonna let you fill in that blank right there because I know you know what's coming you best believe I'm gonna do it so there we go if I'm however if I'm getting like hangover anxiety or period anxiety I don't drink okay because I know that it's gonna make it worse so don't go drowning your problem with alcohol meet friends oh boy do your friends become like the best thing and this is why you should always keep your friends close during relationships like they're always gonna fucking be there for you and I am a proud owner of keeping friends during a relationship like I spend a good amount of time with Tom but I also spend a good amount of time with my friends there is a nice separation there and I like it okay not in a bad way I like it because I like my friends would you believe and also I just think it's good to I'm not like future planning but I mean if I were then it's good to have the kind of separation isn't it like this is my boyfriend this is my friend sometimes they come together but most of the time they are apart and that's fine that's great and it it really pays in those times where if you're going through a breakup or a hard part in your relationship because then your friends don't know your partner and they're gonna side with you you want someone who's gonna be your fucking cheerleader who's gonna be on your side and who's gonna be I don't know rubbing your head singing you lullabies and giving you the best experience ever because they're your friends and they need to see you through the tough times and the good times and maybe they don't want to touch you but that's also all right because I don't want my head rubbed necessarily but you're like I need to get out the hell will you come and do something with me and if they're good enough friends they'll fucking do stuff with you okay if you don't have friends that's a very sad time but all is not lost okay you can go out and meet new people and I would say meet people that make you feel good don't make meet people that make you feel shit about yourself okay now it might take a little while to find this group of people and I don't know what kind of person you are but for me the people that make me feel good are fellow performers I don't know why they're just the fucking happiest go luckiest people ever it's like spending time with a group of happy golden retriever puppy like it really is great i can't stress it enough sorry i just wanted to reset the camera and check the battery because i was like i cannot be dealing with another camera battery disaster i also need to sort this lighting out because earlier it was light coming through and i have a light here and now it's just it's not working at all okay great so the second half of the podcast is going to look significantly better than the first half well that's sad isn't it but there we go that's the that's the cars we've been dealt fine by the way for new podcast watchers here's my scary cup nobody commented on the last video of how much they thought it cost from cats protection charity shop please let me know um how much do you think it costs in fact there's, i'm not giving it to you if you win i'll give you a shout out though i'll be like well done to this person who won a competition where you win nothing <laughs> there needs to be a prize uh you name your prize and I'll give you it maybe if it doesn't cost that much okay meet new people yay like I said meet new people that you actually like and you want to spend time with and who don't make you feel like shit and her like uh you're ugly and you're like uh, I might be because my boyfriend has dumped me so I don't really know but I'm actually feeling really self-conscious um so yeah you don't want people that make you feel like shit okay I don't know where you're gonna find these people they do exist trust me maybe you want to go to like I don't know there are loads of things happening in the world okay you just need to go online you need to go and find them I live in one of the most vibrant cities in the UK one might argue and there's always something going on for everybody and it's like everybody is so nice here everyone's so chill you might even okay I know this is a big stretch but this is what I did when I broke up times two in some ways because I moved to a different place that place reminded me of that person I don't want to live there like hasta la vista like bye so Ugh, fucking fly there uh, okay go away please go away 
it didn't die. Um, so yeah, maybe even you move to a city with more prospects because I'm not saying that you want to like have a rebound, but eventually you're going to want a new, a new person on the scene. It, you're only human, okay? So it might mean that you move to a different place. I was in some places with low prospects of meeting somebody, so moved and we're all good. Now, do that in your own time. Don't be like, I'm now going to go out and find new people because I'm alone and like two weeks after my severely long relationship that I'm reeling o- over. Like, no, you might move to a new place and just like <coughs> restart your life, you know? And I'm not saying you have to do that, but it doesn't sound like a bad idea if you ask me. Number, I'm not sure what number now, but makeover phase, come on, we all go there. I'm not saying you need to make over. I'm not saying you're ugly and you need to be looking better. But it doesn't half help you with your own, especially if you've been broken up with, to go through a phase where you change your look a little bit. You just go, oh, yeah, I might have a haircut. It might be as small as that. It might be as small as I might paint my nails. I might go and get my nails done. I'm not saying you need to go and get fucking plastic surgery. Please do not take that from this statement. I'm saying that do something that makes you feel like you're, um, you might get an exfoliating brush. It doesn't need to be expensive, okay? You might get a new face wash. Do something that makes you feel fucking sexy, fucking good, fucking handsome if you're a man. Like something that just re- regenerates your your physical look. Some people go on these like fitness journeys afterwards. You can do that if you want because exercise will make you feel good. But don't, you don't need to like fit, you severely change your physical appearance to find a new person. They should love you for what you look like, okay? Right now, not what they, what you think they want, right? So it's, yeah, like I said, might be something small. You might just, I don't know, go get a new haircut. I've already said that one. Um, I actually dyed my hair when I went through my first breakup, blonde, yes, that was a phase of my life. My hair got severely damaged though and eventually I was like, oh, I should probably like let this, let this grow out, um, yeah. Uh, you might take up a new hobby and that, that's kind of entwined with like meeting new people but it's like, okay, the fly is getting severely close to the lens and I'm worried it's gonna just be like, hopefully not. Can you leave please? (sighs) Take up a new hobby, something that like you love and distracts your you from the torment in your mind because you're sure to be going through some right now. Be nice to yourself and t- my last point is take your anger out. You're going to be angry. Now, I took my anger out, I forgot to tell you, right? Okay, I went on a fucking mad riot. I was uncontrollable. I sound unhinged, okay? I am now significantly older and I'd like you to forgive me for my repent me for my sins okay I'm sorry I'm sorry right so what happened was my we yeah I ended up like ripping all of my ex-boyfriend stuff out of my room and throwing it onto the landing (laughs) um it worked it got the stuff out of my room it wasn't the best way to do it I'll admit that okay but that was my anger coming out. Now, better ways to take out your anger are to do a physical exercise. Boxing, that's a good one. And you don't need to like go join a fucking boxing gym. You might just go and um, go to like a boxercise class or whatever they're called, you know, like at the gym. Or you might go for like a really fucking aggressive run or just something, uh, or you might go and play darts. Just something that gets your aggression out physically and you don't need to go and punch anybody. Like illegally punch anybody there we go i feel like that was the best advice ever let me know what you think in the comments down below if you're going through a breakup i'm here for you lots of people are here for you okay you just need to go and find them don't sit alone on this one all right go and find humans are social fellas all right social fellas and gals and social things things we are social things, we're social beings, we need support in times of need, okay? Don't be alone in this, go and seek friends out. And if you're that person that's neglected your friends during your relationship, well, they'll probably still be there for you, now you've snapped out of your coma, but just don't do it again, 
just remember that okay yeah they were there for me when I went through a horrible breakup and needed some support maybe I will keep them in my life better this time but anyway that is a that's some advice for some future times but yeah if you found this uh, useful please give a little share give a little like give a little comment and subscribe for more fun I'd say this was fun I had a good time um highlighting my work and putting little stickers on it because that is what I'm doing nowadays I'm trying to make uh what would you call that note taking more fun with stickers there's smiley faces there's dead looking faces and there's pizza slices and now I need a wee so thanks so much for listening watching and yeah share it with people if if you thought it was good if you know somebody who would benefit from this subject and I'll see I upload every mon no wait yeah Monday and Thursday and the videos come out earlier on my Patreon page which is Patreon I should probably change it but uh, Diaries of a Doctor on Patreon all one word and then they come out two weeks after on my YouTube channel which is maybe where you're watching it but if you're listening and you want to watch the video I've just told you where to go my YouTube channel is at Dawn Barlow and I have nothing more to say well I always have more to say oh my god I didn't do my weird thought don't worry though <sighs> if you stayed right to the end fair fucking play I have a, I've actually got a, ooh, okay, I've got quite a, a selection of weird thoughts that I save up when I think of them, and because often I'll forget them later down the line, so I've got two, but I'm only going to do one, because I need to, you know, this is me really needing a wee right now, so, okay, <laughs> this is a, this is a weird one, I suppose, right, when I was in year three, I fancied this child who was in year six, maybe five. We called him Strawberry. I don't know why. It was a code name, actually, but I don't know why Strawberry. Anyway, I was thinking about it the other day, and I was like, I really fucking, like, loved this guy. But then I thought about it, and I was like, I thought... Because when I was in year three, which I was about eight or nine, I... And he was probably, like, ten or... Yeah, like, ten? I thought he was like 25. I don't know why. I just thought, you know, when you're young and everybody who's older than you just seems really old and like really wise. And even though I'm 28 now, this, like someone who's like 35 would still, if I was eight, they would still seem like they were 10. And do you know what I mean? Like, anyway, so I was thinking about it and I was like, I fancied a 10 year old. I need like a bomb drop in there. I know it doesn't sound that weird, but then I th I thought about it and I know that I was eight, so it was like fine. But then I was like, I actually fancied a 25 year old and in my head, he wasn't, oh no way, not 25. I actually fancied a 10 year old and in my head, he wasn't 10. He was like 20 something. So that's my weird thought. I don't know if anybody actually cares or if anybody thinks that too but really go away and think about it and I think that's the issue is I think about things too much and then they become weird because on the surface not so weird of course an eight-year-old is okay to fancy a ten-year-old but there we go that's the end of that okay thanks guys if you made it to the weird thought section comment down below um comment the weirdest word or emoji or maybe both comment the weirdest word <laughs> that you know or can find in the comment section and that'll be fun because no one will know what you're talking about okay bye i really need to pee now love you